you all. I hope you are all safe and well and not feeling too anxious about the current situation in the world. Very important that don't let the anxiety in. Easy to say, I know. First day of spring was yesterday and uh, I'm gonna take the opportunity to go out for a nice long walk whilst I still can. So it's today, the 21st of March, so who knows when they're gonna introduce sort of tighter restrictions on the movement of people in, in London. The pubs closed last night for the foreseeable future. That's never happened before, I don't think. Today's walk is guided very much by kind of principles of uh, social distancing, wanting to stay away from kind of areas where there's likely to be lots of people. Although <laughs> I'm over at the Hollow Ponds now and there's quite a few people over here because it's a beautiful day and people have been stuck indoors all week. So I'm going to stick to the open spaces and take a delightful walk through Epping Forest. Actually, kind of tracing uh, the footsteps of a walk I did almost exactly a year ago to the day, which I called Spring in Epping Forest. And uh, it is indeed Spring in Epping Forest, so it should be lovely. And of course I can't use any public transport. They've requested that people don't take unnecessary journeys on uh, public transport, so I'm going to make this a circular walk today. So I've got to try and find a route back to Leytonstone that doesn't involve directly just following my own footsteps. It was nice actually to pass uh, Leytonstone House, home of Edward North Buxton, author of the, uh, the definitive Epping Forest guidebook, I think published in 1884, something like that the Leighton Stone Mulberry Tree here in the grounds of Leighton Stone House. We have some wonderful tree dressings here on the Mulberry Tree. I guess these might be to do with the spring equinox yesterday. It might be a coincidence. So my walk today may follow the footsteps of the walks that Buxton himself took many times. What a lovely thought. I'm going to stick to these paths here that run around right around the edge of uh, the Hollow Ponds area. They're actually called Leighton Flats on the maps. They sort of go around the back of Snowsbrook Crown Court. It's a lot quieter over here. It's quite busy over at the Hollow Ponds. So I shall be avoiding that area. Actually, it's interesting. I don't think I've done a video of the, uh, the Sayers Brook that gives its name to Snaresbrook. I have walked along a little bit of it. Uh, and that's on my blog, but I didn't make a video. It's interesting because it's another one of those sort of very minor little, you know, tributaries, a little, a little ditch, if you like, that's kind of forgotten, but obviously has great significance because it, you know, gave its name to uh, that great big courthouse over there that you've heard many times said on the news. Today at Snaresbrook Crown Court, well, there it is over there. I feel like I should go and pay homage to the birch well, which is over there somewhere. If I can get to it, there's a lot of water lying around on the ground. And here it is, the birch well. It's where the, the wood nymphs come and have a dip when no one's around and play around in the water. If you're lucky on a full moon, you can come down here and get very quiet, you might be able to see them. Obviously, they shouldn't be doing that in what was once a source of drinking water, but you know, wood sprites will do as wood sprites do. And I think this is the Wanstead Parish boundary marker. You can just see W and the P there. And here are two further boundary markers, I believe. This is in the video I posted last year, and I think that confirmed that they are boundary markers. And I think those boundary markers were, of course, have had significance for who could use the, uh, the, the well or not, I believe, because if, where you paid your uh, 
where you paid your parish rates or your parish tithe. Uh, that would go towards the maintenance of the, uh, of the wells, I think. There's going to be a local history expert who's going to jump in the comments and set all of this straight. So uh, I'll leave some of that to them. It's a bit lazy in that, but you know, I'm out for a walk. The glorious Eagle Pond. And here we go, the boundary marker between the boroughs of Redbridge and Waltham Forest. So here's an odd paradox of the current situation. I've never seen so many people walking through this part of the forest. So this bit here, Gilbert Slade, is always insanely muddy. It's going to be like wading through a bog, but I'm ready for it. So this route that I'm walking at the moment across the hollow ponds, up across Gilbert's Slade and up to the waterworks roundabout. This takes me back to kind of like my early epic forest walks. These are some of my old tracks through the forest, if you like, when the kids were smaller and maybe I could only get out for an hour or two just before sunset. And this is how wet it is here. Crows are really unhappy about something. Maybe it's all the people that are in the forest today. I'm sure some people are probably thinking that, you know, I shouldn't be out walking at all. I shouldn't be out of the house. Perhaps they have a point. I think whilst you are at liberty to walk in the open spaces, key point there, open spaces, not congested into uh, indoors or in shopping malls and stuff, then you should do it because here in London, we will be in lockdown at some point. Uh, who knows when it will be? My hunch is that it's a few weeks away. And when you can't go out, you're gonna really feel it. I've been indoors all week and uh, had the kids at home for three of those days. So, you know, you need to stretch your legs, breathe some fresh air, get some sunshine on your face. And you need to just get away from all the stuff that's going on in the world. Give yourself a little mental health break. Enjoy nature. And uh, <laughs> if there's one thing that's gonna come out of this, it's that uh, nature's gonna love having this break from humanity. You know, it really brings home the fact that what's happening is terrible. But we are just one organism out of billions of organisms that live on this planet. And sometimes we think we're all that matters. Actually, we're just one tiny part of this beautiful ecosystem. Sorry if I'm coming across like too much of a, a hippie there, but you know, I mean, look at me. And now there are no people. I wonder what the trees are telling us. Wish we can have a listen. It says that going to be difficult with the pubs being closed for so long but wow we're gonna have a really good night out when they open again in about six months time it says what do you think you're doing trees don't talk to people those voices are in your head <laughs> it says it wants us to leave uh, leave it alone for a bit I reckon we can manage that it's saying that when all this is over that you should organize a, a big uh, a meetup and take everyone out for a nice walk together all your very loyal YouTube viewers. I think we have to listen to the tree, right? There's the glorious pumping station. I'm just going to turn down Forest Road for a short distance and then walk up over the uh, covered reservoir. There's the cattle grid. I love the fact that this is still here. this bridge over the North Circular. It's got one of the best views in London that I'm about to show you. Here we are looking north, up towards Edmonton. You can see the, the chimneys of London Waste up there. I've just noticed this footpath here that runs parallel to the North Circ and I've never actually walked along here before so good opportunity to try something new. I'm always looking for 
new footpaths and pockets of the forest that I haven't walked along before. Now, I've actually been planning to walk the whole North Circular in one go and make a film of it and actually do a little publication. And I even actually wrote uh, a treatment for that film um, called North Circular, a road movie on foot. I've kind of stolen the road movie on foot line from um, a review of uh, what is the film by, um, by Antonioni? Il Grido, Il Grido by Antonioni. Um, and this footpath would be very really useful and it does carry on to a bit of the forest. I don't know if I've been to this bit of the forest, but in fact I haven't ever been to this bit of the forest and this is exciting, look at this. I don't recognise this little portion of the forest at all. One of the reasons I think it might be completely new to me, because look, there's this, this underpass here, which I'm pretty sure I would remember. Look, we've got this little kind of ditch that goes into a concrete culvert, and I think it comes out of the bottom of this hill and runs under the North Cirque. Yeah, I have no recollection of walking through there at all. How great! And the path continues along this kind of steep-sided bank here. And look, it looks like it continues along the North Cirque. I feel like I have to follow it. I'm compelled to. Yes, yeah, so a couple of years ago I started thinking of projects like that North Circular film that I could do that was slightly bigger than my usual uh, YouTube videos. And we've been kind of almost self-contained little projects where there would be a film and uh, a little accompanying publication, a text. Yeah, what do you think of that kind of thing? I kind of fancy doing it. You have to wait a couple of months. By the way, I've launched, I've launched a shop, an online shop, finally. Go and take a look. There's a link below. It's called The Lost Byway, like my blog. And it has... Um, you know, some of my very favourite images I've selected to put in there that you can have as posters. A couple of them are on t-shirts. There's a great pylon t-shirt and a, an Eastern Avenue one. So uh, yeah, take a look, see if you fancy something. So this, this path here has really created an interesting new element to this walk today, which I thought was just going to be tracing old footsteps, but this is new terrain for me. I don't know what it is, but there is something quite romantic for me about the North Circular. I know that sounds mad, but it makes me think of wide open spaces. It makes me think of America, the Midwest. So now the path leads out into the houses. So I think I'll leave this path now and head back into the forest. Important to avoid people. This beautiful blossom here. Glorious. Just, just goes to show, doesn't it, that no matter how many times you walk in Epping Forest, there's always new bits to discover. Now I'm back on familiar terrain up here with this path. Did the classic thing sat on this log for a bit, looked at my maps, got up, walked away, got about 200 yards and I realised I'd left my walking pole here. This guy, this guy's become a real solid companion on walks in a short space of time. Across Oak Hill now and into the next part of the forest. There's so many of these lovely little forest pools here. This is delightful, isn't it? I love this part of the forest here. Coming up to Hyams Park, which will be, I think, a turning point in my walk. Humphrey Repton's Hyams Park Lake. Perfect place to have my lunch. Wensleydale rocket and piccadilly sandwiches. Of course, Wensleydale cheese just makes me think of uh, Wallace and Gromit. Coming up to the point where I'll have to 
think about my route back to Leytonstone. I've been walking for about three hours. It's coming up to just coming up to three o'clock, and I've done about five miles. So either I kind of boomerang it, if you like, in which case I can carry on up through the forest for a bit, another couple of miles maybe, or I can turn it into like a triangular walk, which was my original idea, and then up here, head down to the roading and walk back along the roading to Wanstead Park which is, uh, I don't know, a little part of me doesn't want to leave the forest but let's see, decisions up here anyway. So I think I am going to cut up to uh, Woodford and then drop down on the other side into the Roding Valley. It's quite a steep climb here, up, up from the Ching, up to Woodford. It's amazing to be out here today and it's beautiful weather as well but it's likely that um, you know at some point I won't be able to to do walks like this I think over the coming kind of weeks and possibly extending a little bit further so you will see some different type of content on the channel I plan to keep uploading a video every Sunday which I've been doing all year so far and uh, I love having that kind of contact with you so I've got um, various things planned to keep a regular flow of videos even though I might not be able to get out for a walk. So don't be surprised if you see something slightly different or odd pop up on the channel. So Woodford sits on this spine here between the Roding Valley and the Lee Valley. It's a really special place Woodford with Woodford Wells. I'm just going to slide down the side of Woodford Green and pick up the, uh, the river Roding at the bottom there of the Roding Valley. So through these houses here, you can see the high land that marks the far side of the Roding Valley there. It's glorious views. And we're going right down to the bottom of that river valley. One of the best things about the London Borough of Redbridge that I absolutely love is the way that they number their footpaths. Look at this, footpath number 10, Worcester Crescent. And here it is, footpath number 10. I don't even know if it goes where we want to go, but I have to walk down there. What a beguiling landscape this is. Something quite kind of enchanted about it. So here we have one of the borders of London, between London and Essex. On the left there, London Borough of Redbridge, and on the right, the county of Essex. This is great, Forest Edge. An interesting bit of accidental symmetry there because at the beginning of our walk we passed by Leighton Stone House which was once the home of Edward North Buxton, author of the Epping Forest Guidebook, 1884. But when he moved from Leighton Stone House he moved here to Forest Edge on the edge of not what is now Knighton Wood and Lord's Bushes and some of the ornamental waters in Knighton Wood and Lord's Bushes were part of the grounds of his house which is uh, interesting to link those two locations together. It's just there on the opposite hill. Just crossing over the central line here. Tubes are running today, but I think they're on a reduced service. There's the incredibly cute Roding Valley Station. One of the most minimal stations on the tube network, I'd say. I've always really liked these flats here. So we just go down here, past Loughton Rugby Club, and the roading is at the end of this lane on the other side of the rugby pitches. And here it is, the glorious river roading. I love this river. I actually walked along here, along the roading from Wanstead, just a couple of weeks ago actually, uh, on one Sunday afternoon, and it was great. However, that week I couldn't get this far because the, uh, the footpath on the other side was completely flooded. So I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping the waters have receded a little bit, otherwise I'll be coming back this way. So the little bridge here is closed, which is a bit of a shame. It looks like it's closed for a while and it's not the flooding, but look, there's a couple of Notices here which are quite interesting. Here's the official one from Essex County Council notifying people of the closure of the uh, of the bridge and all traffic up the lane there. 
and I love this. Someone's posted their response to it saying, I'm just a guy who uses the bridge daily. Historically, Essex County Council don't prioritise pedestrians and bridleways. And there's a website there, luxbra.net. <laughs> I love people like that. The river's not bothered. It's going to flow on its merry way anyway. So I guess I've got to go up here. I don't know quite where up here is though. Well, there is actually this little footpath here that runs beside the river. I've been along here before actually, so let's give it a go. My feeling is that it will get, you know, end in some very dense undergrowth. Let's give it a go. Yeah, it just runs to a dead end pretty quickly. So let's go up this bank here into, I don't know where. It's actually back to some uh, rugby pitches. More of Loughton Rugby Club. Someone's playing golf out there. And it seems that you can get back to the river bank down here. It's interesting, you can see the brambles are already starting to reclaim this path here. I reckon give it another couple of months and you won't be able to see this. So I would say that's the end of the path here at this gate by the rugby club. I'm not sure what to do now. So I have to cut across this little bit of the rugby club and then I think there's a little path through here to somewhere. This is great. I didn't know any of this was here. There's a very old bit of metal fencing. And now back out onto the street. I know where I am now actually. And uh, and I have to find my way back to the river. Now into Roding Valley Park. And we are on the Roding Valley Way. Which is always good. There's a glorious smell here. They've recently cut the grass and there's a beautiful smell of freshly mown grass. Now we cross this river and back beside the glorious river roading. Woodford Bridge. It's quite pretty little settlement up there and of course the top of that hill is the is the water tower at Claybury Hospital. I think now it's called Repton Park or something. I made um, two previous videos of uh, walks along this section of the river roading so forgive me if this part of the video isn't as extensive as perhaps it could be but I'll link to those two videos below. It's uh, half past four now or 4 40 I think it is Sunset tonight is at 6.15. It's that time of the day and that point in the walk where you start to revisit other walks, older walks, previous walks in your mind. They, re they come to you, all flashes of memory of perhaps this time of day, somewhere else, maybe up the Lee Valley, maybe over in the West London industrial heartland maybe out in the Buckinghamshire, Chilterns, anywhere really. It's, uh, it's quite intoxicating. Each one of these bridges feels like an invitation, doesn't it? Wow, what a mighty pylon. All praise the pylon. You see the heron, the totem bird of this part of London. I love this part of river roading walks, the majesty of Charlie Brown's roundabout. It's been great in terms of social distancing, hasn't it? I've hardly seen a soul. It's so beautiful and peaceful along here. It's about an hour till sunset now. This is a really majestic pumping station here. Beautifully catches the sunset. 
nearly didn't come out today to do this walk. I'm so glad I did. It's been such a mental relief after such an intense week. You know, out here today, it's almost felt like the world was normal. And of course, we know at the moment we're living through an extraordinary time, kind of unprecedented in modern in the modern era, anyway. So this has been a welcome relief. Over this bridge here, I think this is one of the most elaborate and modern of the roading bridges. Fantastic Eaton Manor Rugby Club over there. Season's on hold for now. As the river roading goes beneath the Eastern Avenue, I think this really marks the end of the walk, or the end of the video anyway, because I think at this stage now, I'm just gonna walk up the Eastern Avenue and then take the quiet little back streets down to Leighton Stone. So I think this is where we'll sign off on this glorious, blessed walk. Thank you so much for coming with me today, for venturing outside in these troubled times. We've always got each other. Remember that, we've always got each other and we can always go out for a walk. There's a, about 150 or so videos that you can, you can dive into. Stay well, stay safe, look after yourselves. It'll all be all right in the end, we'll get there. And I'll see you on the next walk, wherever that may be.